If you're single and you're watching this, man or woman doesn't matter. You're serious about love, long-term legacy, all that amazing stuff. You want that Beyonce and Jada, Will and Jada, or your grandparents, whoever you know and look at as a model of they did it right. They have real love. If you want that, you got to stop asking people, are they single? That's the wrong question, but here's the right one. Are you emotionally available? I repeat, are you emotionally available? Why is it important? I'm going to say this from the standpoint of being a man. Fellas, why is it so important that you stop asking if she's single? She could be single, but still not emotionally available. Back to the Airbnb metaphor. If the last dude that stayed there trashed the place, yeah, she's open for business. Her Airbnb is open. She's single. Nobody's purchased that home, if you will, in this metaphor. Nobody's made it home, but it ain't ready. It's not available. It's not ready yet for me to come in. It ain't cleaned up yet. Men and women, same thing goes both ways. So point number one in this little fun, <laughs> quick video to get you to stop asking people, are they single? Are you emotionally available? Why? Because at the core, relationships thrive on. The linchpin of what a relationship is in a, is an emotionally safe space and connection. That's it. Think about the people you love the most. Think about the people right now that if you had to go on vacation, who do you go on vacation with? Somebody gave you $20,000 to just have fun. Who are you inviting to that fun? Who do you share the deepest, most vulnerable parts of who you are with? Where you find that, um, that peace, that safety, you find emotional connection. You find emotional safety. It's the same thing. If you meet somebody and they're not emotionally available, you know what's going to happen. Think about the movie Love Jones. The main foundational conflict in Love Jones was Nina going off to see old boy in New York, even though she was having a good time with Darius. She was having sex with Darius. So she had given him a body. There was a, a physical intimacy. They was in each other's home. So there was that physical presence. Um, he was making, he was falling in love for this woman. He was spending his money. He did all of that to pursue her, to find her. Damn near doing some illegal stuff, like, you know, writing down her number off the check just to get close to her. They go out, they have some dates, they have some connections, some compatibility. But she wasn't really available. She wasn't. Nina was single, but not emotionally available, which is why she had to go back and see old boy. That was the entire conflict in that movie. Now, there was other small things, communication and you know, there was some other uh, uh, sub factors, if you will. But the main conflict was her being emotionally available. And then he went off and got with old girl, which created another compounded problem on top of a problem. So that's point number one. The reason you need to make sure people are emotionally available and at least ask the question is because that's what a relationship is. It's emotional connection. Point number two, with that emotional availability, you're really asking, have you healed? Or you can just ask that directly, you know, weave that into your conversations as you're getting to know somebody. Like, have you healed from the damage of whatever happened? Because here's the truth. After every relationship, most of our relationships, if we're honest, most people are not ending relationships very amicably. And hey, we've spent that one year. We were very intentional about our conversations. We've just decided I would never propose to you as a woman. You would never accept as a woman. And we're OK with that. And there's no damage and no major break. You know, nobody cheated. I don't need therapy. You don't need therapy. But most relationships don't end like that. They end pretty badly. They end with us needing therapy, being depressed, needing to cut all your hair off and start a new business. Like all of that drama, all of that pain. So back to the Airbnb metaphor. Even if the Airbnb, nobody's in there. Has it been cleaned and cleaned well? After everybody goes into an Airbnb, the owner goes in and what do they do? They clean the sheets. Even if you didn't sleep on a bed, you got to clean the sheets. That's what a good owner is going to do. They're going to clean the sheets. They're going to mop the floors. They're going to dust. They're going to wax. They're going to make it. They're going to prepare for you. Prepare room by cleaning that room for you. So that's number two, man. There's a lot of people in therapy. I got some thoughts on whether you should date somebody who's going through therapy. I ain't going to say them right now, though. Either way, you need to know. You at least need to know at a certain point, not from day one. Don't ask all these questions on day one. Don't say, I told you this. I'm just giving you some background information to kind of think through these things. And I am saying, I think very upfront from the first moment you meet her, 
Don't walk up to her and say, yo, what's up, some, 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 are you single? Ask her, is she emotionally available? One, she's going to pay attention to the fact that you asked something that specific, which is two, going to tell her you value emotional connection and her healthiness. And if she's a good woman, she's going to be honest with you. And if she freezes for a second and kind of hesitates, she's about to lie to you. <laughs> she's about to lie to you because she thinks you maybe you got the right look for her. You got the beard going, you dark and chocolate and mocha, light skin, you know, whatever her thing might be. So once again, this works, this question works based on how honest people are, but I just want to equip you with the right mindset because it's not about if people are single, it's about they're emotionally healthy. Last point, first point was about emotional connection. Second point was about her being healthy. If you're a woman watching this, him being really healthy, has he dealt with the baggage, the trauma from those last prior relationships? Has he cleaned that out? Has he dealt with that, processed it, forgiven Started anew, fell back in love with himself, spent some time on himself, on himself to get back to who he is and back to a better man after this last relationship or this last situation. Point number three. Um, what the hell is point number three? Hold on. Oh, I got it. <laughs> point number three is really, really important. Oh, this is so important. If you're watching this you care about relationships. My, my content is for people who give a damn about relationships. Mature men and women who want to be married, generally speaking, who want to be married, who are not afraid of commitment, who ain't just in that, you know, that playing games with people phase of life where you just smashing all these chicks. You just messing with all these different dudes because they whining and dying. Like, this is for people who want something a little bit more substantive. You know what I'm saying? So point number three is really important. I need you to listen for this one. Point number three is you gotta you gotta watch early on what we're talking about. No, damn, that's the that's the wrong video. I got two videos in my head at the same time. That's the wrong video. All right. So the last point, I had to go back to my notes. I'm doing a lot of content today. Yeah, I keep it real though. <laughs> um, I got my notes down here. The last point is real simple. Um, you have to make sure she has room. Why? Because if she doesn't have room for you, she hasn't healed, then her energy and her focus will not be 100% given to you. And if you're going to pursue something with anybody, man or woman, you know, like if you're going to be in it, not only do you want them to have the room and have processed and dealt with their traumas and be emotionally available, but what you're also asking for by trying to figure out if they're emotionally available is if they're not emotionally available, then they won't be able to give you 100% effort. They won't be able to put their all into seeing whether you and that person has the have the compatibility, the right chemistry, the right set of skills, the right background, the right life purpose matching up. Like It's all about compatibility. You know what I mean? And so if he or she is not emotionally available... They can't give you a full 100% effort. They can't give you all of their focus. They can't give you all of their energy and actually make that process of getting to know you worthwhile. You're wasting your time. You're literally wasting your time. So hopefully, man, <laughs> hopefully this helps. I just want more people to kind of not spend a whole bunch of time. And then you get into it six, three, five, eight months, a year, and you realize, oh, shit. She's not emotionally available. She's still thinking about, oh boy, like like Nina and Love Jones. She's still thinking about this dude. I thought we were building something. I Oh, snap. Same thing with women. I know it happens all the time to women too. Dude is still thinking about his ex. Or he just hasn't healed. His ex cheated. Everything you do reminds him of her. And so everything you do, he's questioning like, are you about to cheat? Are you lying to me? He's thinking about her, but questioning you. He hasn't healed. He ain't cleaned up the Airbnb. You don't have room. It's still dirty. Ain't nobody mopped the floors. It's not ready. It's 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 open. It's open. Like business is open. But that space is not ready for somebody to be in. And relationships are about the heart. I want you to move into a relationship. I want you to move into a place with somebody where they haven't made room for you and cleaned up and prepared. So. That's it, man. Just being noble, just being me as always. Uh, if you like the content, please follow, follow, share, tell some people, man. Share this stuff. I know this was good. This one was good because I learned this one the hard way. I learned this one the hard way. I did. Um, I'll say this last thing. After my last major breakup, you know, one of my best friends told me, one of my best friends, I was like, dude, be honest with me, like for real. 
Like I'm tired of getting hurt in relationships. I'm a good dude. I think I am. I, I love God. I try to do stuff the right way. I ain't perfect, but I try, I sincerely try to do things the right way and honor the woman I'm with. Why can't I find like long term? So I wanted to, to get myself in a better position. So I asked my closest friends, be honest with me. What am I doing wrong? What do you see me doing that I don't see? You know what my honest friend said? And I only got like three or four when I say honest. I know I know who can keep it 100% raw with me. But you know what, what this one specific person said? He was like, bro, I need you to slow down and stop investing emotionally as fast as you do. You got a big heart. You romantic. You creative. You, you believe in love. You trust God, all that stuff. But you give... You give and you go there before they're really, before they reciprocate and show you that they're as available and as open as and as hopeful as you are. So I need you to slow down. I need you to slow down. Don't give your heart as fast. Be, you know, make sure you protect that space because your heart is valuable. It's literally the core of you. It's valuable. Slow down. I want you to slow down and I want you to, to make sure she's emotionally available and ready to give you, ready for you to walk into that space. Cause I'm trying to buy, <laughs> I'm trying to get some property, uh, one house, you know what I'm saying? In this metaphor. So I've learned from personal experience. Um, hopefully this helps you, man. That's about it. I'm out. Share the content as always. Come back. I got a lot more. Oh, I got a lot more. Peace out.